the welcome to today's lunch time seminar. Um, I'm very pleased to, to welcome our speakers for today. We have Arnold and B. Arnold is a photographer um, who has been working on an uh, amazing body of work to do with agricultural shows, uh, which are an incredibly rich and vibrant visual resource, which can impact a lot of material that we have in our collections. And um, B. Farrell, who um, may be familiar to some of you because B's been here before, uh, she was involved in work that Justin Parker uh, brought to the museum, his fieldwork project, which was displayed around the museum some years ago. Um, um, B is a, an anthropologist and a writer uh, and works on lots of really fascinating cultural projects that connect to the countryside. Um, so, over to you. Thank you very much. You. Well, it's wonderful to be here and thank you for the invitation. Um, so, we'll get on because I know we're a little bit later. Arnold de Serra, um, talking today about his project, The Country Show. So a bit of background about country shows will be kind of enmeshed in the photograph. So it's not going to be a technical discussion about country shows per se. Housing this wonderful um, resource of Merle, but more the aesthetic and cultural stories. Um, originally founded in the mid 18th century to showcase and invigorate farming prowess and prosperity, the country show continues to celebrate agricultural development and achievement. But, juxt but juxtaposed against the formal and traditional activities, a subtext has evolved of an event that is a collective representation of what the countryside is, how it is defined and redefined ad infinitum. The country show is a cultural phenomenon. Arnold de Serra's visual narrative powerfully articulates both, both the subversive and the symbolic. Perhaps able to do this so well because of his dual life experiences, brought up in a Dorset village, yet now firmly a Londoner, an artist with Spanish heritage, yet deeply British idiosyncrasies. idiosyncrasies. His penchant for Jack Tatty films evident in the highly personal photographic opportunities he seizes. So we have this first image. The country show, Arnel, has been described by many as visual cultural anthropology, your, your project. Mm -hmm. How would you respond to this? And do you feel that being a fine art photographer credited with this approach is beneficial or problematic? Mm. Bit of throw you in <laughs> there. Um, basically, a lot of uh, people that I've spoken to about your work see it as more than the visual aesthetics of there's a deeper background foundation to what you sure. do. Sure. You're basically animating the knowledge that you yeah. know about the, the country cultures of the country show. Yeah, I mean, I suppose for me, um, I was sort of brought up in the countryside and then moved to London. And for me, country shows aren't really, they're not, what fascinate me, fascinates me about it is they're not countryside and they're not urban. There's sort of this sort of constructed sort of, sort of construction and a mix of you've got an urban audience, you've got a rural audience, um, but everything that's sort of shown within the sort of confines of the show show ground is kind of um, it's been all taken out of context in a sense. So you know livestock aren't in the fields in the countryside, and so for me as a photographer, it's kind of it's almost like a sort of slightly surreal kind of environment. Um, you know, as Ollie was sort of saying, it's kind of quite a rich environment to be able to make pictures and kind of sort of maybe comment on certain aspects of the countryside that you couldn't comment in the way that if you were in the countryside itself. So, um, so moving on from what you're yeah. saying now, to talk about this painting, um, do you think it's an artistic or a cultural image, or both? Well, I think it's both, really. I mean, it's a painting of Robert Bakewell. Um, who was a yeoman farmer and he was, it sort of goes back to the early beginnings of sort of selective breeding and for me I was sort of halfway through the project when I came across a book by Elspeth Moncrief that was looking at animal portraiture and sort of painting um, and that really gave me a sense of actually kind of what I was doing at the country shows you know how I might fit in as a photographer um, because there's always been this rich heritage of documenting livestock um, and he was part of a group of people of sort of late 1800s, no, was it 1700s? Late 1700s. Late 1700s. 
1700s who um, well in this in this painting what's kind of interesting about it is that all the livestock painting came out of the tradition for um, horse painting at the time so all the animals are in profile um, and it was quite common to see an animal sort of quite up in the foreground and then things push back into mm. the background. So you were talking earlier about on the train about how this was a kind of almost like a formulaic, like a sort of structured mm. way of seeing livestock. Yeah, um, very and that is something we will turn to later yeah. about the sort of the contemporary photographs you're, you're making now. So yeah, we'll and go on to the next image. Um, <coughs> and just continuing that discussion about how animals are portrayed past and present, what do you think the difference is in the motivation and the aesthetics of such paintings as these and your photographs? And are there still the same drivers as scientific discovery, economics, and knowledge sharing you possibly might see in some of these early paintings? Well, I mean, I'm sort of doing something different in the sense that I'm kind of looking at a culture and a subculture, so I'm not, I'm not looking to promote a breed or, you know, a champion bull or a certain kind of sheep, I'm looking to, I'm quite, even though it's all about the animals, I'm quite focused on the people and how they're interrelating at these gatherings. So, you know, my, my take on it is quite different. And also, I'm looking at, um, you know, the sort of, the exhibitor and the spectator. So, a lot of my photographs are about the relationships between you know, what people are seeing coming to the shows and the people that are actually yes. um, wanting to win yes. prizes, you know. So, 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 so it's a yeah, so it's, yeah, exactly. It's a different, it's a different perspective, mm. really. So we move on to this one. This one, I believe, is a sort of a catalyst for the inspiration of your country show project, a project that's 12 years in the making that is, has explored our past and present relationship to the countryside by interpreting of the, vi the visual so this one is a very powerful image for you. Yeah, because I mean, this is sort of one of the first examples of, you know, I mean, it's an engraving from um, a painting by George Curit, and it's, again, it sort of follows on from the Robert Bakewell interpretation. So I think for me, it's just, I don't know what fascinated me about this particular book was, you know, it's like a long sort of history of sort of, um, painting of these animals, even people like Stubbs was sort of, you know, sort of, mm. um, there's a number of sort of well-known paintings of sort of Oxford and things like this, so I kind of always had this sort of feeling that in the back of my mind, because shows and show societies date, will go back so far in history, you sort of think about country shows, especially if you're maybe from the town, a lot of people sort of think that country shows are something that are you know, not particularly relevant to them and their lives, but actually it has a sort of extraordinary history that goes back, you know, a long time. Yeah. And secondly, the if you look at the um, visitor figures for a standard county show, it's over 100,000 people that are visiting it. So if you equate that with all the county shows in the season, um, that's a lot of people in the country mm. that are visiting, you know, these events. So this image here, with <coughs> no people, no, you know, it's very, very kind of symbolic in many ways of how the thinking was at the time. It's very different from, possibly, we'll move, we'll keep this one in, it's over here, but you're, we're going to move on to that very important um, piece of artwork there that I know some, there are some, a lot of research being held at Marl here. But we'll move on to this image, which is a very different view of what is happening in the kind of liminal world of country and urban spaces, and um, how people connect to that sort of a very peopled place. So this is the um, this Royal, is the Royal, Royal Welsh, Welsh, isn't it? Grand Parade. Yes. Yeah. So what do you think this photograph communicates visually and culturally, um, and how we take over these spaces? I mean, the last painting was very empty of people, mm -hmm. and it was very much about the landscape. Uh, in the background, whereas this is basically humans, human and animals taking over a space and making it their own for a short time, which is a particular characteristic of, of the country show. How, this image of yours, do you want well, to... Well, I think it's a good starting point because it's an overview of what a country show or county country show is. I mean, 
you know, the scale of the county show is quite different to say a more regional show or even, you know, very local town sort of show. But I like the fact that it's beyond it is the countryside itself. Secondly, you've got this swathe of visitors and you've got the Grand Parade and effectively, you know, as I understand it with show societies, they needed first of all they needed an audience. And secondly, that audience had to be entertained. So the main ring was always a sort of focal point um, as a place of entertainment to keep people, perhaps, who historically had moved away from the countryside to the you know, towns and cities, who'd lost, perhaps, um, some of their con sort of connections to the countryside. And this sort of developed as the show societies and their annual shows developed. So um, I think for me, you know, the the Grand Parade is one of the highlights of um, mm. you know, the sort of county show, as it, you know, whether it's a three or four day show, the Royal Welsh, I think it's a four day show. But yeah, so I mean, it just basically is a kind of an establishing picture that sets, sets the tone sets the for the story. Yeah. 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 So it's the sort of performers in a sort of a theatre uh, of activity. It's absolutely, yeah. it's a theatre. It's definitely. a very powerful shot because <laughs> it's beautiful in its patterns with the like, linear, very linear rows of animals, very ordered, and then the kind of mass of people, which, you know, it's very much about, in your photographs, about relationships, whether that's people to people, or animals and people, yeah. um, which is very interesting, those different sorts of visual uh, pattern makings that you have. So we go on to some <laughs> images here, which are, um, <laughs> humour often, <laughs> humour softens criticism and visions, Photography is the perfect medium for highlighting the absurd, the perplexing, and the charming. Do you feel that the photographer's ability to capture these serendipitous juxtapositions of the country show make them a less constructed story than the paintings we saw earlier? Or is it more that these are interpretation and the paintings from a couple of hundred years ago are representation, or is it all a bit of a mix? Um, well, I suppose I'm, I'm kind of reinterpreting. I mean, I'm not um, representing in the sense because I'm, I'm interested in how people behave and interact with each other. So if you just take that idea and, and then we're, we're in the country show, um, you know, for me, my photography is very much about how we interrelate. And there's also, also a slightly absurd side to how we, how we interrelate. Hence my sort of interest in people like Jack Tatty or in a sense, there's a bit of the sort of British sitcom about my work. Um, and I kind of use humour to sort of tell the story of the country show. I try to take it somewhere where, you know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, for me, this could be at the British seaside. I mean, it's yes. a sort of slightly yeah. stereotypical view of things, but it's, again, you know, people arrive in their classic cars, they sit down, they have their lunch, and they sit there for the entirety of the day, and then they get back in the car and go to the next show. <laughs> You know, each to their own, but I mean, it's it, it's such a complex environment, the country show. That's another yes. thing why I, I love it so much, because there are lots of things that actually have absolutely nothing to do with agriculture, mm. livestock, or whatever, you know. It's it's um, it's a real melting pot of people. Mm. Um, <coughs> and, and you'd see their peculiarities so immediately. I mean, the way they've got that little tray on, you know, already. And, um, we were talking <laughs> on the train about stereotypes and the fact yeah. that in, in stereotypes and, and that some of these images, it could be that you're seen as being judgmental. And I was actually <laughs> saying to you, I was actually saying, no, it's like opening, you know, like saying, oh, yes, of course, I don't see it as a judgment statement, but I see it as more like things that we might all see and think about, but it's sharing that, yeah. that sort of uh, humour in caricatures almost of yeah. people. And yeah. we can see ourselves as a, a British. Or, or a collective culture that gathers together and shares uh, kind of these outdoor experiences. But yes, the different layers are fascinating. So we're going to move on to this, these images. <laughs> we are the authors of ourselves, and these images, colourfully that are coming up in a role, show many aspect, aspects of what it means to be human and what it means to be human and relate to animals. From the ritualistic gathering around a table to our nurturing relationship with animals, to individualistic pleasures and private behaviour. 
What do you feel about possible, <laughs> we talked about the country show stereotypes in Italy for the and the construction of how these stereotypes are relevant to your work, um, the humour and how you read these images, because I mean this image here, <laughs> there's so many different aspects of what's going on, it's our sure. human relationship to the animal, there's the kind of sure. that other part of exhibiting, how we care well for animals, there's so many different parts of what it is to be a peculiar human. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what, what's sort of going on here? Oh, shall I go back to the... Yeah, just that previous yeah, yeah, yeah. shot, I mean, um, it's a sort of example where it is a sort of form of construction, but it's a very informal because my work is, is kind of, you know, it's, it's candid photography. It's not, these things aren't set up and then they're photographed. So, um, you know, in the way the humour works, the, the fact that the rabbit's got this sort of upside down smile and it looks like a person and, and this is actually, they reversed it. I first saw it with the cattle. They reversed the polarity on the vacuum cleaner. So it's actually blowing out air rather than sucking air in. So if you want to, you know, you see some of these large, sort of balls of the Charolais, for example, being blow-dried in the morning. It's quite, it's quite bizarre unless you're an exhibitor and you, you, know, you understand this sort of culture. So this long-eared rabbit being blow-dried within the nature of its life, um, it's, you know, it's just, I mean, it's kind of fun, isn't it? I mean, it's, um, I mean, that's one of the joys of looking at this stuff as a photographer is like, you know, you get these opportunities to photograph it. It was quite funny because I was being very British in my own right, I was actually queued up to take a picture. Because there was a guy in front of me, and I mean, I saw the picture, oh my God, I've got to photograph this, and this guy was taking forever. And I just wanted to shove him out of the way, you know, just go and take the picture. But I queued, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I queued up to take this photograph, and he had a flash on his camera, I think, and I thought, this is gonna wreck it. And in the end, I took, in the first frame, and to lose the, the picture, but it's it's just another example of what I'm trying to do with the photographs is tell the story in a slightly different way, and I sort of see my job as being able to sort of engage an audience with with the subject, but by playing around with it in this way and using humour to yeah. sort of draw you in. Because it's the sort of image that you kind of think, well, why? Why is this going <laughs> well, on? And then why, immediately, yeah. straight after that comes, oh yes, and you kind of connect, but there's that sort of split second where you're questioning. But that, that, the sort of human behaviour that would make you do this. But that reminds me once, I think it was an advert for a 2CV, and this guy had managed to get the 2CV to, to drive at 120 miles an hour. So if you know a two-cylinder 2CV car, the idea of it going 120 <laughs> miles an hour down the motorway, and at the end of it he said, it's something like, you know, please feel free to email me, but please don't ask why, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's a bit like that, you yes. know, just sort of, it's a bit yes. of a celebration, really. It yeah. is, it is. Yeah. Sometimes it just these things happen and they change over time, don't they? So we move on to this one, which is a lovely photograph. Um, and it sort of goes in still with that sort of humour and caricature almost. And we were yeah. talking about caricatures of people and actually people being part of that construction of their own caricatures. Because you, you said that when you spoke, you kind of, she was quite humorous. Well, she it? was in on the game, yeah. I suppose, is a way to describe it. You know, she was judging. Um, judging and by tasting and yeah, judging cakes, you know, the yeah. cakes, whatever. But I mean, on the actual print, you can see tiny bits of chocolate crumb on her thumb. But I mean, it's just, she just reminds me of a sort of Beryl Cook painting. Mm -hmm. You know, she's got that. You know, when we talk about the caricature or a stereotype, in a sense, she just, um, you know, sort of fitted that for me. And yeah. I just love the jewelry and the, and the earrings, sort of, are quite wavy, like her hair's a little bit wavy. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I think it goes back to my childhood as well, because as a kid, you know, I'd be brought up with certain things, and you know, Beryl Cook, Thelwell, if anyone's familiar with Thelwell, and, and the usual sitcoms that you'd have grown up with. You know, for me, the sort of all informing, you know, you see certain things that you relate to, but you don't necessarily know why at the time you're relating to it, but it's, it's, it plays a part in my picture making. Um, so, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> So we talked about how these sort of photographs, many of them, convey some of the traditional elements of the country show, specifically the, the engagement in exhibiting, the sort of things from the yeah. exhibiting your prowess at making cakes or exhibiting flower arranging. There's a lot of those in the country show, exhibiting mm -hmm. your best. Mm 
Yeah. Um, and that demands the judgment from others. So you've got that kind of presenting, but also you're having people making comments, or you're sure. you really are get, you know, quite vulnerable, but also quite colourful, as you can see. Um, how do you think these kind of ways of exhibiting and being judged have changed over the years? Um, do you think the urge is still <laughs> omnipresent to do well, this? I was just sort of, um, yeah. Yes. Well, we Are you earlier, aware of it? That well, I'm wondering if it has changed. I mean, oh, the competitive age, I don't think, has ever changed. I mean, it's quite funny, actually, there's another story that came to mind. Some good friends of ours moved from London out into uh, just outside Newbury. And what was hilarious is they, um, sort of husband and wife, decided to enter the local village fete, um, you know, be part of the community and sort of put a few things in. One was Logan Breeze and the other, he, I think the guy, put in um, some photographs. And he was really hacked off that he basically hadn't won anything for his photograph and his wife got first prize for the Logan Breeze. <laughs> so what happened, we ended up with this infight, family fight, the feud between the two of them. And I was also thinking about the Downton Abbey episode, I can't remember who the character was, it was a local flower show or something, where the lady of the manor every year won first prize, just by default. In this particular episode, I think uh, she relented and stepped aside as one of the locals actually won a flower prize or something. But I mean, it seems to permeate lots of things mm. in our lives, you know, whether it's TV or as, yes. as we've got here in real life, but yeah. it, it's, I, you know, I, I wonder if it really has changed that much. Because um, yeah. I suppose it's that sort of more that pecking order and that kind of respect. You know, the, the person that's worn for X amount of years has got that sort of kudos yeah. about being the one that yeah. wins, yeah. and there's that sort of <laughs> shuffling about. And then you've got different levels within the showground itself. So you've got yeah. the arts and crafts WI thing going yes. on. At the same time, you've got serious breeding, and you know people are after interbreed champion and all this kind of thing. So, you've got it all sorts of levels mm. running through um, the showground. Yeah, which absolutely. Is kind, of, kind of fun. Yes, different different levels, but perhaps the cake making is just as serious as some well, of the. I think it's probably more serious. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's worse is then the people that come in and judge the judge's decision. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Because then you get you. I think it's quite amusing to wait until those prizes have been given out. And then you hang around and then you wait to see the, the general public's opinion of the judge's opinion. And it gets quite fraught. Yeah, it can get quite kind of testy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It? That's a good photograph there. That. That's scuffles over the, the, you know, the logo berries or whatever. This is a different photograph. We talked about this earlier, about how um, this isn't about competition or a, a, a sort no. of entry um, this was something slightly different. Do you want to describe what the story behind this one is? Um, well, that was actually at the CLA Game Fair. Um, and it was simply a dog charity that was trying to drum up membership and business. So they were encouraging members of the public with their pets to just come and have their photographs with their dogs. But obviously, you know, what I liked about the fact that you can only see the owner's hand <laughs> rather than the owner. And, and also the gilt frame, because of, again, we go back right back to Robert Bakewell. Mm. Image, or you know, we go into any sort of major art gallery, everything's heavily gilted around yeah. all of these paintings. So, um, and I like the fake grass that the dogs sat on, <laughs> it's just little things like yes. that. But I think once you interweave all the images, you know, you, obviously, we're only seeing a selection of the work, but you know, for me, you're building up a picture, and these little details begin to interweave and relate to each other. Yeah. Bless you. So, uh, yeah. And so also, you were talking about <coughs> how that you can play on concepts and words because there's the word frame. And a lot about the country show sure. is framing, you sure. know, the, the kind of countryside and this sort of uh, country show in a sort of never, neither country or urban world. So it's framing contextually. And so, this is a frame of this story of a dog and. So there's all those plays on the concepts and the words as well that come into your yeah. work. Um, you know, if you sort of dig around, they're, they're there as well, aren't they? Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Is like once you start to interleave it, I mean, mm. these things crisscross, and you know, it gets quite interesting because you have this interplay between how the images are working yeah. together, and and you know, it's building up a narrative. It is building up sort of different layers um, within the body of work. So. But as, as I say, it's humour that ties yes. all of it together. Yes. <coughs> stuck. It is stuck. Well, that's the end of the show. Is it, is it, no, it's not quite. <laughs> Can I just make it go? 
does it seem to want to go down? Yeah. So this is more about that sort of presenting your best efforts to be judged. <laughs> <laughs> this is very funny. Um, because he's got to move from these prize cattle yeah. to these little hats, woolly yeah. hats. Yeah. And in many ways, it's just as important to somebody who's made these, but also to a, as a cultural statement about, <laughs> about we should we reveal ourselves, yeah. you know, as, yeah. as to kind of very human peculiarities is what we want to spend our time doing. And we're all sharing it yeah. as well, the experience. I think that's kind of what I like, is it, yeah. it isn't just a sort of, a sort of high-end, highbrow event, you know, everybody's contributing in some shape or form. So here we move on from the woolly hats to something that's very intensely serious, I, I find it, when you describe sure. it to me, sure. about how the positioning of cattle and horses and other livestock yeah. are very, very particular and formulaic and written down as sure. to certain positions. And these, these people here, these men here, are working so hard to get this to, creature to stand in the position sure. that is recognised as the position. Sure. So, sure. Uh, you know so much. And also the other thing about the background that you've got there. Yeah. Do you want to describe a bit about the sure. positioning? Of, of yeah, so basically, obviously, it's a Holstein. Um, and I, I believe that it, it's just peculiar to, in particular to the Holstein society, there is a very specific way of photographing the animals. And um, and this is what interests me about this because I've sort of, in a lot of the images, I take the context of the image out. In a sense, I don't tell the whole story because if you, sometimes I think if you tell the whole story, you lose um, a sort of sense of mystery or a feeling of you know what's going on here. And if you tell the whole story in the image, it's like okay, I get that, and you move immediately onto the next image. So you kind of lose something in the process. And the whole point of the photograph, again. <coughs> If you think of Jacques Tati, based his films out of mime, he was a mime artist, and he, what interested me about him was his sort of interplay with very little narrative. He had sound, but he, he, he didn't use, unlike, say, the British sitcom, which is all storyline, uh, he would tell the story through body movement, people's interactions, and what I like about this is that there's a whole story around how these um, cattle are photographed. So if you're not aware, the, the tail there, that's a tail extension. Uh, if you look carefully, <laughs> yeah, here, you can just see this darker green. Now that's, that's um, a board that elevates the front legs. And if you look at the trajectory of the animal, it's going up like a rocket. So what it does is it straightens the spine. Yeah. So these guys here, you've got one handler lifting, trying to keep the animal's head up. You've got the guy here in the middle with feed, so he's trying to get the animal's interest with the food. And you've got another guy sort of clicking his fingers, trying to get the animal to be looking at him. So it, again, it goes back to the initial Robert Bakewell image, which is all these animals are represented in profile. But what's particularly <laughs> interesting about the Holsteins is that then you get the photographers end up photoshopping the back. I mean, not in this image, but you'll find that they're sort of photoshopped within an inch of their life, so it's almost like a ruler straight back, which obviously just doesn't exist, but it's this sort of accepted representation of their breed. And um, so for me, you know, it doesn't matter what show ground you go to, these animals are always being photographed, and Holstein are one of the most commercial breeds, and they're endlessly winning in the dairy section or whatever. But the, the thing about it that interests me is there's a whole sort of story that goes on around all this. And I think I saw one um, magazine where you had the cattle in front of waterfalls with a sort of Tahitian-style background. <laughs> and I was thinking through this magazine, you know, what's this got to do with dairy cattle, you know? And um, so there's a whole, there's a sort of whole sub yeah, yeah, there's a whole well, subtext yes. that's sort of going on around this, and you get trained up to photograph it in this particular way, etc., um, etc. Et so I always find it quite comical. So for me, I know I'm being a little bit subversive by documenting it in this way because technically it's not a 100% accurate document because there's no, I skipped the photographer and shot the, <laughs> shot the theatre, so yes, to speak. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but yeah. And also, um, this is at the Royal Cornwall Showground, and it's one of the few places in the country <coughs> that you can
can actually kind of photograph this display because you've got a raised bank at the back that's sort of like a little studio backdrop so you can see the animal clearly you've got this whole kind of studio situation whereas if you were photographing at other county shows everything's flat level you wouldn't be able to get this profile mm. so yeah I mean it's something I'm quite aware of and something I wanted to photograph because it, it, it's just it's well, just kind of I, bizarre yeah and what I love <coughs> about your descriptions and seeing this is that you sort of put knowledge of these things as you animate it so you make it comic <laughs> and but also enlightening um, and there's a story behind it so it's not yeah. you've kind of you, you, you do know, you know <coughs> you're reading certain things, what you're seeing, sure. um, and that is kind of captured in that, in a very sort of accessible way, which is, I, I think is very uh, interesting. And we go on to this as well, very similar sort of Yes, I mean, this is idea. a Royal Welsh, and, you know, these stands are beautiful. I mean, Welsh cobs, I, mean, I think it's Wednesday, traditionally, um, you know, they have a whole day set aside to this, and... I think this particularly is a complete mud bath, hence, you know, it's sort of splattered everywhere. But I also like, you know, you've got this beautiful animal, and I suppose the normal way to represent it would be to sort of photograph it to its maximum, if you like. Yeah. Whereas what I like about it is we've got McDonald's underneath yes. this and beer. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I mean, it's, it's kind so of. <coughs> yeah, but I mean, I think that's, it's also telling the story, yes, you know. Yes. So, um, it's those juxtapositions, isn't exactly. it? Those kind of exactly. clashings of worlds, you know. There's that sort of very stylized, beautiful creature against these kind of ochi plastic signages. Yeah, it's like with the Robert Baker and putting a Kentucky Fried Chicken sign behind it. Yeah. You know, it's it makes you think of, more. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. Same thing um, here? Yeah, similar thing here. I mean, you know, if you want to control the pigs, you basically need that board to direct them, otherwise they just it's complete mayhem. Um, and then again, you know, we were talking about humour, you know, I'm not trying to laugh at, I'm trying to laugh laugh with, is a way that I would, I'm not a satirist, I'm, my humour is quite gentle, yeah, exactly. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because this steward, for example, he chose to have a bit of a laugh and wear his British tie, the fact that he's got his newspaper rolled up in his pocket, <laughs> you know, it, it's things like that that, you know, he's... He's describing himself in a sense, so I like that kind of information. And then, you know, the way the cane is kind of, you know, the inevitable it's end of the pig, <laughs> kind the of, symbolically speaking. But I mean, I like, you know, that's what I'm kind of looking for. I, I, I can't say that when you're taking a picture, you know, all these elements are buzzing around your head, but um, certainly um, that's what's happening in that narrative. So that's, that's kind of what I'm after in the images. <coughs> And a similar, a similar thing here, you know, we've got the stalkers giving a demonstration, but again, for me, um, what was that great Yorkshire show, I think, I love the yellow plastic gun, you know, <laughs> and the, the little tags on the socks match quite nicely visually with the yellow plastic, but also, it is a spectacle, so you've got the audience behind, but for me, when I was taking that picture, I was imagining the Munro's behind, because in a sense, if you sort of scrub that out, and you put the Munro's behind, that is kind of what we're looking at. So for me, I'm not saying you see that in the photograph, but for me when I was taking it, mm. I kind of had that in mind, in the sense of like, oh, there's the audience, but actually what it would be outside of the yes. show, show space would be Munro's hills, yes. etc. So it's sort of changing the context. Exactly, changing, exactly. Yeah, that's <coughs> the, and then the stories that we see. And, and, we see. Yeah, and in a sense, this is what a good example of why, for me, it's so fascinating, because you know, the showground is removing that context from where it's all come. Everyone's arrived at the showground, and then we're talking about something slightly different. And I think it just helps you to think, think again about um, sort of rural life. You know, yes, as a sort of constructed space yeah. almost. Yeah. So <laughs> after a busy, having a break from, <laughs> from all the, I'm sure you had a cigarette. Yeah. Break, didn't you? you know. So this moves on to the sort of. Sort of discussing with you the, the idea of entertainment, how the country show has possibly changed completely from its origins, as now is seen as a place where there has to be entertainment, these people are re relaxing after too much entertainment, but a place where financially there has to be more of this sort of thing, or not this, but this sort of thing yeah. happening. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go back to the Beatles in a minute. Well, 
another reason I like this is this image is because um, I was reading about the what was it the Peterborough uh, show showgrounds and the history of Peterborough showgrounds and there was a biplane something like 1912 1915 something like that they had a biplane flying around the main arena and you sort of think about those times even then you know they were very aware of we've got to keep people entertained we've got to keep them in the gate we've got to keep people spending their money. <coughs> So the human cannonball um, is quite a random. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, I can't. It's not a lot. What can, has that got to do with having, you know, the country show other than? Well, absolutely yeah. nothing apart from it's a very important part of the construct of the show. Yes. Because we go back again to the movement of people to the towns yeah. and one's disassociation from where you've come from before, and then you're trying to keep people in that space. Mm. It's been like that for a long time. Yeah. <coughs> and the sort of um, yeah. Here we've got all sorts of different um, show ground uh, stalls and, and kind of other aspects sure. you know, that go alongside. It's kind. Of, well, it's like it, almost like a, sh a, sh a sort of shopping street. Well, well, it is. I mean, the show grounds are fifty percent retail and fifty percent um, showing. Really. So and, and in a sense what interested me again about it is that if you look at a map of the showgrounds, it's only it only changes related to the geography, you know, to the actual location of the showgrounds. So, you know, the cattle school's always there, sheep, blah blah blah. Mm. But you've got a big area of retail which again is paying for rent and is um, it, it, it follows on with the income stream for the show society. So um, you have everything from wedding dresses, you know, you have your wedding boots, but food's another big thing, yeah. but it's not necessarily good quality food, some of it. Um, you know, you've got a whole mix of this stuff. I mean, the, I think, you see the early one with the jacuzzi? Yes. Yeah, with the police officer. Yeah, I mean, you think, well, now there's a jacuzzi got to do with a country show, you know. But, you know, some people just go annually. Obviously, people do yes. buy jacuzzis at these places. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, so it, it feels a... It feels like it doesn't sit well with what you might perceive to be yes. rural life, but actually... It could be anything the, you want it to yeah, be in exactly, many ways, exactly. because our ideas of what that space is between the country and, and, and the city is, is so d changeable and so mm -hmm. personal that this could be very much how you see relaxing yeah. and being in a country yeah. or something. Yeah. You know, it's a very uh, individual kind of way of seeing this, this And space. it's quite ambiguous, so... I like that ambiguity yeah. for obvious reasons, you know, because that police officer, is he being arrested, what's going on? But, I mean, they just happen to know it, but the point is, I kind of took advantage of yeah, that yeah. to be able to create something that's, you know, a little more Quite ambiguous entertaining. and entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. And then, the sort of closing here, um, sort of the rhythm of the show and the ritualistic <coughs> quirkiness at the British of work at play, um, this project's now ready for you to share with a wide audience, and this is the first time, actually, isn't it, that an audience has seen it live in the slideshow? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah. this is the yeah, first, yeah. this is, yeah, <laughs> and i um, very happy this is at Merle, yes. but what are your hopes that this might develop, um, um, developing to what? Yeah, well, we'd like to exhibit it, and we'd like to um, get it published, because I think that is probably the best format for the, for the work, because there's quite a lot of imagery, and we've sort of seen a selection of it, there's quite a bit to it. Um, so that would be the ideal. So we're sort of slowly walking, working towards doing like a lot of dummy book thing uh, designed at the moment. So in the ideal world, yes, that's, that's what we're yes. hoping for it. And, and also there's another side, I, mean, I don't know if it's possible to bring some of this back to the showgrounds, because I love the fact that if you go to the showground, you, you, you take a view of this kind of imagery, and as you're going around participating in the showground, you, you, know, you see, you pick up your own little observations and relate to the kind of thing that I'm talking about, and perhaps you just, you know, it's slightly coloured how you might then view the country show as you walk through in the day, you know. So I quite like, like that, that idea in you'd situ. Like, you'd be part of the country show. Mm. Your kind of way of seeing sure. the country show be part of the country show. It's sort yeah. of a never ending yeah. kind yeah, of. Very much so. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's a very important part of what you want to do, sort of engage more with the activity around the country shows and yeah. with people and yeah. it being much more kind of responsive. A sort of communal yeah. kind of relationship with yeah. people in place really. So this is the closing of 
Yeah. Which show is this one? It's Westmoreland, but kind of, it's maybe not one of the strongest pictures, but what I like about it is that you can clearly see the showground within the countryside. Yeah. You know, and you know, the countryside's constructed anyway, but I mean, it's a construction within a construction. But I love the fact they're just taking the welly boots yeah. off. So that's effectively what we do, isn't it? We yeah. chuck our welly boots in the car, we drive to the show, walk around the show, yeah. come back, take our welly so boots off, off welly boots off, and off we go again. So, yeah. so there's a sort of reference to that sort of day tripping as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think, it, uh, is it good for some questions? Or yeah, I think so. I think, uh, uh, can, I, can I leap in and, and ask yes. a quick question and make comment? first and then we'll put it up in the poll. Uh, one thought is, I suspect Peterborough, 1920s, is probably Alan Cobham, who had a famous flying circus, which my own grandfather made up in the 20s, I think. Oh, right. Probably at an agricultural <laughs> show, I think. Um, <laughs> so you go up in the vibe, but it's a bit terrifying. Um, but I'm struck, uh, uh, reminded of your, 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 your Spanish heritage, and yes. I'm wondering about that, that notion that these shows Made that they reached a sort of tipping point where they became rather less focused on the rural, the agricultural practice, and and more catering to uh, uh, urbanites who perhaps were harking back to a period when their their ancestors were were involved in the countryside in a more significant way. And I was at a livestock feria in Spain this year, and I've been reading uh, an anthropology of uh, Asturian. An Asturian village by a, a former museum curator called Donald Taylor, uh, which is about the sort of 70s and 1980s and differences in, in rural Asturias. And in that, he talks about the significance of people coming back to those shows. So even when people have gone off to the cities to work, uh, they're still coming back to those little festivals and ferias in the countryside and re engaging with family, but also sort of maintaining the same social networks between villages. And and I wonder, I think in, in the UK, these things have moved on uh, quite significantly from there, because we're obviously, we're not just one generation removed, we're several generations yeah. removed in lots of cases, and sometimes even more. Um, but I wonder where you think they're heading. If, if that's a sort of direction that, that these sort of shows are, are moving, and, and you know, sometimes going back to Spain, I can see those, those sort of slight origins yeah. still in practice. In what way do you, what exactly, do you, do you mean in terms of where they're heading? Where they're heading in terms of that relationship between the urban and the rural, the sort of blurring of boundaries, are these going to become more important contexts, do you think? But it, uh, it seems like a very important time to be to be capturing them and recording them in the way that you are, but do you think they'll change and, and evolve in other ways? Yeah, well, I think, yeah, I mean, I think historically they've evolved as well in the sense that, you know, if you look at, you know, a lot of the showgrounds are more permanent now, they're not. You know, the East of England, you know, that picture you saw of the fox hunting was the old showing part of the Peterborough showground. They had a new, they, at the East of England showground, I think they had a new one built some time ago, a more modern pavilion. But I think, I think, you know, TV's played a massive part of it. And I think, you know, TV, people in TV have been quite smart because they've picked up on the audience figures. Mm. So I think people began to realise that actually there's a lot of people visiting these shows. It's not, you know, it's not like 10,000 people. I mean, we're talking a lot of numbers. So rather like the social media thing, or you've got to have a certain following before you get something published because publishers want to see that there's so many people taking an interest in whatever it is you're doing. And I think they really picked up on that. So TV, I think, has helped in getting people to show, have an interest in, in you know, the country show as a sort of spectacle or something to visit. And I think also, Maybe, I'm just guessing here, but maybe it ties in with um, a bit like the National Trust, you know, places like the National Trust where, you know, if you, if you need to sub, you know, a charity or an institution or whatever, you need, you need those people coming through the gates and the obvious place to look at is families. Mm. So, as a, you know, the National Trust are heavily promoting families and what you can do in this space, almost before they're promoting the actual space itself. So we're into a sort of lifestyle discussion, aren't we? And I think that's something that you know maybe contributes to how, or perhaps how the shows will develop over time. Maybe I don't know, but um, I think you're right. I yeah. think 
interesting con uh, con looking at the Spanish show. It seems that, you know, at a certain point, ex generations away from this sort of the original shows, they do change, the integrity changes, and it's seen as a sort of money-making opportunity, and, but also a, a connection with communities around in the area. So, and that's where the entertainment comes in, because there are people wanting to come for different reasons other than see what actually the country show used to represent. So, Can I just make one point, I think? Um, okay, we're talking community. I think it depends on the size as well. So a county show is, is exactly that. So it's the whole county, it's the focus for the county. But I think if you begin to look at the, what I call the regional shows, much smaller shows, the one day shows, you, you, I think you see a lot more community involvement in that thing. So, I don't know, here's another example. Woody and Fair is a sort of country show, but it's it's also grounded in fair history in its own kind of personal history, I suppose. But everybody comes to that in that region. You know, so it's about scale as well. Isn't it? Yeah. I think it is, yeah, because it's manageable, isn't it? Communities generally. Defining a community, but you know what I mean. If you, if you just think of a traditional community in the sense of just a group of people in the locality, rather than say an online community or something, it's just quite different. But I mean, I think you know you, you get into that place where it's manageable. It's manageable to put on the volunteers come in and put these mm. exhibitions or shows or whatever on. You can you can you can you can function in that way. You couldn't do it on your own at a county show level. So I think. You know, we can perhaps referring to that as well. You know, where you know, people's involvement can be seen on a sliding scale of numbers, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Um, one way of looking at it, it might be sort of fair, uh, fairs and agricultural shows um, as a meeting place in sort of sense of continuity. You mentioned the sort of fairs where you know back in the old medieval, late medieval fairs they were meeting places and and the gypsy fairs now are people who are very dispersed and it's it's a place where they can meet up and form new relationships um, and um, I I follow quite a few shepherds on Twitter okay. and, and okay. uh, they live in very isolated places but they go to these fairs and they're you know they're meeting up old friends and they've got this you know, intense interest in the breed of sheep in common. Um, so I think that's a very valuable role. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think, because mm. often, especially, not, well, even today, farming is quite insular activity. And I, I, yes, completely, it's about being with like-minded people doing the same sort mm. of things to sort of connect with their stories in, 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 you know, quite an insular kind of uh, world. Yeah, I mean, time and time again, while I was doing the project, you know, talking to farmers and people would comment on the fact that it was a, a meeting place or an annual gathering, you know, people they hadn't seen for a year, they'd all meet up and see each other again on the circuit, if you like, and so it was a very, it was, you know, a very important part of it, I totally agree, you know, um, and the social side's really important, um, you know, they party quite hard, don't they, farmers? <laughs> 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 well, you've got the more sober than you've got to do. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Um, can I ask about, um, do you get to know your sitters? I mean, obviously, some of the pictures that, that you were interested in gestures of them, but some of them, it's a portrait. Yes. Do you sort of get to know your people and, and do they come, do they perhaps identify yourselves as small town country people or not? Um, well, first of all, yeah, there are groups of people I keep kept sort of talking to and meeting, <clears throat> particularly around the cattle lines, I think, because there's effectively a circuit that they're all on where they're showing animals at the main county shows, their key county shows, you know, Norfolk, Cornwall, Great Yorkshire, Royal Welsh, all the, and especially the Royal show closing, um, you know, particularly, you know, you'd see same faces, you know, um, and, so, sorry, what's the second part? Well, I was just wondering if you get to talk to them, whether your, your, your thinking in your mind is, are they country people, or are they urban 
Well, that's well, that's quite interesting, isn't it? Because um, I distinctly remember a group of people I, I got to know who were lorry drivers, but they were passionate about showing longhorn cattle. And you can assume they're all country people, or they've got farms, or they work, or, or they're farm managers, or life, you know, um, you know, and, and you think, oh yeah, that, these people are all to do with the countryside, but they're not necessarily. Um, but I think it's just, you know you, you're talking about sharing a passion, and I think that's what these people are all sharing is that passion, just the different, you know, they're coming to it, I think, in different ways. So yes, it did get to know quite a lot of people, um, and yeah, I miss it. Yeah, I, I do miss it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was that or divorce, basically. <laughs> Um, yes, I do actually. It was the Royal Norfolk. Sorry, who was? Ah, oh, right, sorry. Yeah, it's the Royal Norfolk showground. I don't know why. Um, yeah, it's funny. They, each place has a slightly different atmosphere. You can't necessarily, you can't necessarily describe the difference, perhaps, but definitely they have their own atmospheres. And the Royal Norfolk, for me, I had a lot of affection for. I think it's just something to do with the layout something to do with um, maybe the range of activities that they'd be showing. So you'd have a lot of traditional craft. They were very big on the cattle, um, the heavy horses because of the Suffolk punches and things like this. You know, they had a very strong, um, what was it called, representation or, you know, um, a strong program around them um, and the history. But it was just something about that particular showground that I loved. I always love going there, um, but particularly that and the Great Yorkshire. Um, I don't know. I'm just buying into their marketing, but, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but yeah, I would say the Royal Norfolk Showground for me was the one that I liked the most. You know, it's not your favourite. We are hoping to entice you back <laughs> the Berkshire. Berkshire. <laughs> <laughs> at some point. Uh, no, maybe yes. that wasn't a diplomatic answer. <laughs> 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 But again, the Berkshire show is a very different show again, you know. And also what I liked about it, I mean, it's not the mainstream element of it, but obviously if you keep going to all these different shows, you really see the differences. And they have a huge section on on coaches. So um, that was kind of fun. But it's, it's sort of pushed into the back of the showground, which is a shame, but I mean, it's great. I mean, visually, they're, they're fantastic. So I got keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, if you, if you come back to the class. <laughs>